Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Matt. Welcome to Roleplay Chat. We are two game masters who can't stop talking about role-playing games. And today we give you <clears throat> seven tips for meaningful traps. I'm glad you said it because I would have probably screwed up the number. <laughs> 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 All right, let's dig right into it. The first way to make a meaningful trap is not to make them in isolation. Let's be honest, a trap all by itself in a corridor with nothing else for the players to engage with isn't nearly as exciting as a trap that springs right in the middle of a combat with big enemies or a trap that happens when there's a time crunch and the players are trying to get out of a dungeon. If there is more to just the trap, it's more meaningful. So number two is why is the trap there? Who needs the trap to be there? So purpose. As with uh, character, we think about motivation. With traps, you have to think about why is it there and who needs it. So if you can answer those two questions, you have a lot of cool things and it can actually bring story element and maybe the big bad guy has a, has a, a role in placing that trap there. It, it really elevates things in another sense too because it doesn't feel so out of place. If you have the answer to those questions, odds are there is more meaning to the trap's positioning, the trap's uh, the build of the trap, or what have you. It gives lore and it gives information to the players uh, to move forward in the story. Our next tip is to add variability to how your trap interacts with the players. So by this we mean don't just build traps that are a mechanical device that require thieves' tools to undo. Make the trap a a mushroom that'll explode with a spore of poisonous poisonous spores or make it a room filled with with flammable gas that when the party enters with their torch might blow up if you add these I try to think of it as you can roll a different kind of skill to notice them or a different kind of skill to prevent it from triggering that's especially good if you maybe don't have the archetype you need like a thief but it's, I think it's good in any situation. It very varies at the approach and keeps the players on their toes. The fourth one is, how was the trap built and who was responsible? If you're in a cave full of goblins, try to think of the resources that that group of goblins would have to build traps. It doesn't make sense for them to have an intricate light prism puzzle in a small barrow where the biggest treasure is a plus one attack sword. Like... Yeah, and it's all about like realism and knowing how it's built will also give you insight on how is it going to actually be dealt with by the players. Mm -hmm. And it can also lead into telling the players more information. If the trap that is in this goblin barrel is a magical rune that would require a high-level caster to put... Mm -hmm. If it's because there's a high-level caster who's employing these goblins, you've added a whole layer of intrigue by adding this trap into your dungeon. So it, it, it's really something to consider and something to think about. The next tip for you to consider is try building a trap that's obvious, but the way to disarm it is a lot less obvious. Yeah, if they know they there's a trap there and they need to go through it, but they don't know how to actually stop it, then Actually, the trap kind of morphs into a puzzle. Yeah, kind of, right? I guess. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's interesting. And then, but, but they know that, maybe they figure out that if they don't find out how is this boulder going to fall, they're going to get crushed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You did a really cool example of this, Chris, in one of your games where you had a large bridge. It was a string bridge that looked rickety and old. And we had some party members on one side of the bridge and one party member on the other all by themselves. And there was a horde of goblins rushing down one of the mountains towards the guy all by himself. Now, this bridge was clearly a death trap. But how much weight could it handle? Yeah, obviously not the whole party could just run on it. But also, if we come back to the isolation thing, this bridge by itself would have been boring, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when you add the encounter, then it becomes interesting because they have to solve it, this puzzle thing, under pressure. And that comes back to the puzzle episode. Yeah, link that up. Go watch <laughs> it. It's great. We're great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the next thing? The next thing is front load your trap with, with some kind of information. Front load the trap with the stakes of the trap. 
Yeah, if, if, if you're about to ask for a perception check to see if they see the metal wire, I personally prefer to tell them there's a metal wire in front of you. You're about to step on it. Roll a perception check or an athletic check or whatever, whatever you want to react in time to not trigger it. That way, when they roll, they have tension. If you just ask for a roll without anything, then the roll doesn't feel mean- meaningful to the players. They don't know what they're rolling for. Even mm-hmm. if you have the like, ooh, this is... They don't. So give them the information. Don't be afraid to front load the stakes in front of the skills. Yeah, and, and I mean, I'm hearing some of you already in my mind saying, yeah, but then they'll never get a chance to disarm it. You can still give them the chance to disarm it. You can let them roll, and if they roll really well, you can justify like, oh, you were about to trip over it, but then you swoop down, and you found the little pin, and you undid it, and boom, you've solved the, you solved it, and you've disarmed the trap. So, you know, there's still a way to, to, to work with it that way. Uh, what and The final one yeah. is having a trap not just be damage. This is a big one for, for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, traps could be just damage, but adding conditions very very cool and adding uh different aspects of the environment maybe we can pass that to you yeah yeah so it's a trap isn't just a thing to take hp off of a character a trap should do more like chris is saying it should separate the party members from one another if you have a metal grate fall between them now the two part like the the people that have been separated can chat through the grate to try and figure out how to come back together uh you toss in combat, you toss in other things, like we were mentioning in the first tip, now you've, you've made this trap really meaningful. Other things you can do is you can maybe close a way out. If the only known escape route is crushed by a giant boulder, now they, they, the map they have doesn't have another way out, there's gotta be another way out, and it, it raises the tension. Yeah, and it's always good to think of, again about those, those those pillars. Damage is kind of like the trap version in, in combat, I guess, just like state of damage and attack. But what you're saying is exploration. It blocks part of the exploration. It's a, it's a setback, but that elevates the story. Mm-hmm. And it could also be loss of, uh, of an NPC or something about roleplay, loss of an objective. You're trying to get to a goal, and the trap destroys part of what you're going for maybe you you, you're in a place to find a a really old artifact and the artifact just starts to uh, catch on fire as uh, you you triggered something and then you have to move quickly so time sensitive Mm -hmm. you start a timer Uh, you could actually have a timer that you turn on when they, 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 they they have this trap and now they have to figure out how to react in a short amount of time. The, the last thing that you can do, or one of the other things you can do to make it more than just damage, is make it an alarm. You mm-hmm. know, the, the, the trap could trigger a siren, or it could just be a guard that notices them and blows on a horn that, that, that signals to all the other guards that there's intruders. So this is a, another way to make a trap more than just damage. Yeah, and like the example with the exploding gas was kind of like that. The, the explosion attracts the enemies. Everybody was thrown away, so it's changing the environment. And it's taking damage, right? You're not limited to one thing. So I hope you guys thought those seven tips or ways to make traps more meaningful were useful. Combine them in whatever way you see fit to make the most meaningful trap. And please keep us updated about your traps. We'd love to hear about them and maybe steal them. <laughs> so yeah, tell us all about your cool traps by contacting us on Twitter. You can do so by reaching out to us. It's at roll underscore play underscore chat. Or we have an email that's contact roleplaychat at gmail.com or there's a comment below. Yeah, so thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, all that fun stuff. And we hope to see you next time. That's everything about traps, isn't it, Chris? It is, Matt. Let's call it a chat.